Hey there. Um, what I'd like to show you is some of the techniques that you can use to pull off the photo restoration assignment that you've been assigned. So um, photo restoration assignment is a good practice for how to uh, alter and uh, kind of tweak and improve certain shots. Um, and so what you're, you've been given is some sort of modified or essentially destroyed photograph. Um, from a magazine that I've taken and ripped up and, and scrawled all over. Um, and there are certain instructions, like in this one, um, it says to lose him. That means like to take this guy away, get rid of this guy, um, cover up the rips and, and things like that, Sometimes or the graffiti where I've drawn right over top of the photograph. So, um, this is the one I'm going to be working on. I won't do the whole thing, but I'll do just enough of it to be able to show you some of the techniques that are involved. Um, so uh, one of the tools that I wanted to show you in one of the brilliant parts of Photoshop CS6 um, is something called the Content Aware Fill. Um, so I'm going to zoom into something, all right? And, and I'm zooming in by hitting Control and plus at the same time. You can also zoom in by using this zoom tool over here. Um, Content Aware Fill takes is a really smart tool because it'll take the information from everything around the area of your selection. Here I'm using a lasso tool to make a selection in a certain area. Um, I, if I want to, I can feather that selection by a few pixels so it's a uh, not as harsh of a, a selection. And to content aware fill, I'm going to hit Shift and F5. Right? Um, and your fill function comes up. Sometimes it'll be uh, on white or black, and what we're looking for is content aware. Hit OK. Boom. All right. You take a. You can see that what what the uh, Photoshop has done is taken the information from the surrounding area and filled that incoming area with that fill. So this is a really useful tool to get rid of some of the basic things and you you find you can be using this a lot. So you can uh, make a selection here, shift F5, hit enter, content aware fill, control D to deselect, and look at that. Okay, it's just gone. So um, there are certain areas sometimes where it doesn't always work depending on what's around it. So you'll have to play with it. For instance, if I go like this and make a content aware fill, I want to try to get a whole bunch of this removed. So I make that selection there. Um, I'm going to feather my selection a little bit. I try to do Shift F5, content aware fill. Notice if you zoom into this area there, it's not a perfect seam. It's because uh, because it hasn't taken into account certain details in the photo. So that didn't quite work out as well as um, in other times. So you, you kind of have to play with it. And if you don't like the result, uh, you can go to Edit, Undo, Fill, or Step Backwards if you're going to go over more one step. Okay, you notice the keyboard shortcut, and I'll be using that most of the time as Control-Z. So undo fill, all right? Um, um, so that's content aware fill. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, simply copying and pasting. That can be used, uh, it's great for sort of large sections. So if we take a look at this sort of mud brick wall here um, in this massive gap where I've ripped out a section of the image, um, this might be a good spot to do a copy and paste. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the rectangular marquee tool to make a rectangular selection. And notice that I've, in the options here at the top for, for the tool, I've chosen to feather it just a little bit, just so I don't get those harsh edges when I'm still making that selection. So I'm going to take that selection. I'm going to find some good information, visual information that I can use which in this case is right near the top of the wall, right there. Um, and I'm going to copy it, all right? Um, you can either uh, right click, all right? Layer via, via copy, all right? Or you can go Control and C 
and then Control and V. All right, Control V pastes. And you'll notice over here that it made a new layer via copying. So there's two, just two ways to go, go about the same thing. Now, now that this is on its own layer, if I take this top tool, which is the move tool, and actually pull it down, I can move it around to the point that it, it can start to look like it would fit in, and it's starting to cover up some of that rip, right? That mud brick is so visually complicated that I can kind of move it, and, oh, that looks pretty good, okay? So that you can notice that the line of mud bricks is kind of lined up nicely. Um, if I wanted to paste that exact same layer again, I can just hit Control V again, and I get a layer two that I can work with, all right? And then I can move it down, kind of, shimmy it around. Um, notice that the angle here of the mud bricks is is doing okay so far, um, but notice that the, the angle just of the perspective of the mud bricks is going to start to change. So I'll show you how to fix that in, in a second. I'm going to hit control V again. All right, and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. Okay, notice that the angle here of this line isn't quite right anymore. It was okay when it was up here, but if you notice these lines in the mud brick are kind of at an angle, um, I kind of want to rotate this layer. So I'll show you, um, with this layer selected, you can see that it's sort of highlighted in blue. Um, I'm going to go to the Edit menu and Transform and Rotate. And so and when it's on the Rotate function, I can tweak that slightly. I can still move it around like that. But notice I've rotated it ever so slightly. So now uh, when I'm happy with that, I'm going to double click inside to apply it. And that angle is more correct in as to where that's going. Um, so there you go. So I'm going to hide these layers so you can see where I started at. Right? So you can see that big gash and it's starting to get filled up with more and more visual information. Okay? If I wanted to, take a whole bunch of this all at the same time, there's a couple things I can do. I can hide this background layer so only my copies are there, all right, and go over here to something called Merge Visible. If I hit Merge Visible, all those three layers of, of thin slices of that um, piece of wall have been merged into just one. It's still on its own layer by itself, but it's all just one. Um, so that can be helpful sometimes um, if I then wanted to um, I could duplicate that layer right, and move that down so now I'm working with a bigger chunk um, I edit and transform maybe rotate it a bit more so it seems to, to work with the wall and so on. You'll notice it's covering that guy's head, um, but that's okay. I, I can worry about that later. So that's that's one way that you can work with your layers, is to merge visible layers. So hide the ones that you don't want to merge together, and then merge those ones. Um, the other thing that you <coughs> might want to do, I'll just trash that layer uh, to bring it back to this, is when you're at a point where you're like, you have a bunch of layers and you uh, kind of like what you're seeing, you can go here and flatten your image. So that uh, flattens it right down to the back to the background layer. So there are no layers there at all except for the the, the original layer, but now with your edits. And that can be useful if I want to take then grab some of this corner and grab this and copy and paste and drag it down all together so now you can see that I'm grabbing some of that corner and lining it up here so it looks good. Okay, um, we were talking about the, this guy's head, th that this area covered him up a little bit, so we have to fix that. I'm going to rotate the layer just so, again, those lines of perspective still line up. Double click. If you notice here, that guy's head is kind of hidden. If I want to figure out, okay, well, erase the information of the wall where the guy's head is, I'm going to bring the opacity layer of that layer down 
So I can see, you'll notice that that top layer is now only 50% opaque. Grab my eraser, just freehand erase where the guy's head is. Notice that I'm erasing onto the first layer. So I can see the layer underneath, but I'm essentially erasing so I can reveal the head again. All right, and then when I'm happy with it, I go back to this layer, bring it back up to 100%, and notice that it's there, just like that. So there's copy and paste. So we've gone over content-aware fill, and now copy and paste. And um, those two com combined uh, techniques can work really well for you. The third technique I want to show you that you will use a ton is um, clone stamping. Now, uh, you probably uh, took the other clone stamping tutorial, so you already know kind of what it's what it's about. Essentially, what you're doing is you're taking visual information from one area and stamping it into the other. Um, so I'm going to show you that. I'm going to flatten the image just so I'm working with one flat image and move around to a different area here. Maybe some of these music notes on the drum. Um, this is a good spot to use the clone stamp. So the clone stamp is here over here on the, the palette here on the left. All right, clone stamp right tool right there. Um, the options up above give you different um, sort of sizes of clone stamps so you can change the size and hardness uh, of the brush all right to make it a little bit bigger if you want to um, just know that the square brackets on your keyboard are another way to to adjust the size of your brush so i can manually do it just by hitting the left square bracket and the right square bracket right above your enter key on your keyboard so um, to do a clone stamp what you have to do the first step is to hold down the alt key and notice when you hold down the alt key you actually get a target and that's where your source is going to come from so what you have to figure out is if I'm going to take rid of get rid of this music note I'm going to grab the alt key and click once all right that's going to be my source now if I move that over I've let go of my alt key I haven't clicked anything yet notice that the visual information that I know is going to be taken from over there and stamped over there shows up in inside my cursor so I kind of I can kind of see what's going on so I can kind of click once to to fill it in click 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 and so I've taken information from over there and stamped it over there it's just like taking an ink pad and stamp having a defined source and stamping it somewhere else. I can also use that for this to cover up the music note here on the brush if I, I'm careful about where I'm making my selection. So if I want to make a new selection for a source, I can hit the Alt key again and I grab right here. All right, so I'm taking the bottom of that drumstick as the Alt click. I'm going to let go and notice as I drag it across, if I keep it in line with the drumstick, I can click it and fill it in so it, it gets covered up. All right? You'll notice that if the, the source is right now is right to the right of what I've got. Um, so um, you'll notice that it does make some information. It doesn't always work, so you have to be careful of where your clone stamping comes from. All right? So but that that's another tool that you can use. Um, you can use it instead of content aware fill if you want to be a bit more controlled about it so if we go back over here if i want when i was getting that information earlier and it wasn't working if i wanted to take that information i can go alt and i'm going to line it up the target with the edge of that orange piece carefully go up line it up properly and click in to replace that visual information same thing here click down. The trick with uh, doing a good clone stamp is to have really fuzzy brush so the edges aren't visible and finding good sources. All right. So if you're finding a bad, if you've got a bad source that they, you're clicking from an area that's too dark um, or repeating too much, you're going to get the same pattern again and again. So that's one thing that you want to kind of uh, work on for, for the clone stamp. So there you go. I haven't done the whole thing that it would take me a fair amount of time that sure you don't want to see that um, but essentially those are the three tools that you're going to use 
So on your uh, in your document in your damaged photo, you can choose which one that I provided for you. you can pick whichever one; it doesn't really matter. Um, what you're going to do is follow those instru instructions. So if it says get rid of him, that's what I want you to do, and follow that instruction. And you can use whatever technique you want. So you're like, you know, my clone stamp this guy out and get rid of the the visual information there and clean up the rips, clean up the edges so you have a nice clean rectangular edge with no graffiti, no rips, and uh, essentially a nice clean image again. Okay, so it's a, it's a fun kind of challenge. Uh, give it a try.